What's up guys, the January Patreon rewards are now available. Mana Drain, Edgar Markov, and Korvold Fae Cursed King are all available through the end of the month. If you'd like to support our channel and pick up these sweet proxies, you can do so at patreon.com slash itresolves or clicking the link in the description. What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of the Crack of Pack series. Today we're opening up a pack of Cold Snap. Uh, absolutely love this set. This set is super, super jam-packed with some really cool cards. One of my personal favorites, which you guys are going to hate me for, Counterbalance is in this set. We did open it actually on the last Cold Snap pack opening, I believe, uh, but it is an uncommon, so we got another chance. Uh, absolutely love this set. Lots of really, really cool stuff. Hopefully we get to open some of that today. Uh, Snow-Covered Lands are, of course, part of this, which is going to be really, really fun. Uh, and ooh, that that old glue is very very sticky but uh we are going to go through this as if it is a pack one pick one scenario so we'll do the best we can uh to figure out what our first round draft pick will be gonna go ahead and say i didn't draft during this time uh i do know some of the mechanics and things so we'll talk about those as we go through uh but i truly don't necessarily know like all the best archetypes and stuff so we'll, we'll see what we can do hopefully it'll be a learning experience together so uh our first card here is uh Kajeldurin. Hope I'm saying that correctly. Javelinier. Uh, it is a one, two for one white. Uh, it does have a cumulative upkeep cost of one. So at the beginning of your upkeep, put an age counter on this permanent, then sacrifice it unless you pay its upkeep upkeep cost, excuse me, for each age counter on it. So uh, what that means, uh, the, the first turn after you play this card, you will have to pay one of any color. It can be anything. Next turn, you put another age counter on it, and then you've got two to pay to keep this on the field. If not, you do have to sacrifice it, and that just continues throughout the game. Uh, but you can tap it, and it deals damage to target attacking or blocking creature equal to the number of age counters on the Javelinier. Uh, I think that's a really interesting mechanic, actually. Uh, I don't normally like the cumulative upkeep stuff. Generally, that makes me shy away from a card, but what that allows for is some some really powerful cards that aren't probably going to stick around very long because you might not have the mana to do anything with them. Uh, I don't like investing a ton of mana into a one mana card. Uh, I will say that. Uh, you play this on turn one. On turn two, you tap a mana. You might have another one drop. Probably not. Uh, and so you're investing a lot of time and effort into a card that is only a one two. However, uh, the age counters on this do actually have a purpose, which I think is really cool. It's utilizing that's downside to produce an upside, which I think is great. Uh, I don't know if this is a great card, though, to be honest. I'm going to keep it here for now, and we'll see what we get. Uh, don't super love it, but we'll see. Uh, Drelnok, uh, I hope I'm saying that correctly, is a 3-3 three, three for 4 in a blue. Uh, when it becomes blocked, you can draw two cards. Um, don't love this. Uh, it's a Yeti mutant, which is pretty sweet though. Uh, it's a three, three for five. That's a lot. And yeah, it has a great upside, but it's probably going to be a one shot deal. Uh, it's definitely going to be outpowered by a lot of things, uh, sitting at five mana. So you're essentially getting like a five mana draw to that. You have to wait a turn on to be able to attack in with it. That just seems very, very slow. I think this is just a bad card to be honest. Uh, gutless ghoul. Uh, sweet art uh, is a 2-2 two, two for two and a black. You can pay one, sacrifice a creature, and you gain two life. You know, honestly, I don't think this is a very good card. Uh, it does give you a way to kind of deal with removal spells, so to speak, where uh, they target something with removal, and if you have the mana up, you just sack the creature in response and gain two life. Um, it also just allows you to do things with, you know, surprise creature stuff and all that, but it's, it's not great. Uh, unfortunately you do have to leave up mana for it on top of everything else. Uh, and two life, yeah, it's fine. Uh, it's going to help you stave off some early, like, uh, aggro decks, but not really very well. I don't think it's a long-term plan, so I don't love it here. Uh, Ronum Hulk. Uh, is a 5-6 for 4 and a green protection from snow. So that's anything snow. Uh, Gutless Ghoul, for instance, is a snow creature. Uh, this has protection from it, just to put that in perspective. Uh, it does have a cumulative upkeep cost of 1. Uh, so same thing as the Javelin here. You're just going to have to, you know, upkeep cost pay that every time. 
I honestly think this is probably the best card so far, though. Uh, it's not an amazing one, but it does provide a bomb, which is great. Uh, and the protection from snow, I think, is gonna is a fairly relevant thing in this set. I mean, there is a lot of snow stuff in this set. Uh, just the fact that this doesn't get hit with anything like that is pretty awesome. So honestly, out of all the cards so far, I do think that this is the pick. Uh, oh, I forgot about this. The snow covered island or the snow covered land, excuse me, are actually just commons in this set, which is really weird. Uh, but we just have a snow covered island. Uh, what I will say about these, though, is they are worth it to take. Uh, you do have to use snow lands to play snow permanents or snow cards just in general. Uh, so that is really, really important to take uh, when you know you're going to need them. Uh, I don't necessarily think they're first pickable for sure. But like if you find yourself taking a gutless school, for instance, probably going to want some snow swamps. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Not super amazing things to talk about here, but the, the art's really nice. Uh, love these snow covered lands. Uh, Gelid Shackles uh, is a snow enchantment aura for one uh, white mana. Enchant creature uh, cannot uh, block and its activated abilities can't be played. You can pay one snow land. It can be paid with one mana from a snow permanent, so that can be anything. Uh, Snow-covered island, snow-covered mountain, and so on. Uh, enchanted creature gains defender until the end of the turn, so it just gives you an out to say no, it can't attack also. Um, I, I gotta be honest, I think this is better than the Hulk. It's a pretty big mana. I mean, it's not a pretty big mana investment, but it's like you do have to kind of leave up that one every single time. Uh, and because it's snow, a snow permanent in specific, you might find yourself in a situation where you have like a snow card in your hand that you want to play this card on the field, but only one snow covered land out. And like sometimes that could cause an issue, especially at instant speed, because most of the time you're going to be giving something defender on the opponent's uh, turn. But I do think that this is worth it. It is basically a removal spell. It's a pretty weird investment in one, but it is a removal spell. So I think I have to take it here. <clears throat> uh, Rotom Unicorn uh, is a 2-2 two -two for one and a white. Sacrifice it and destroy target enchantment. Pretty straightforward card. There are actually a number of enchantments in this set, if I remember correctly. Uh, we haven't seen any yet uh, other than the uh, the shackles there. I don't necessarily think blowing up a unicorn for a shackles is like amazing, depending on the card that it's on, I guess. But uh, I don't think this is a great card. I don't think I would take it here. It is a nice just two drop, though. I will say that. And it gives you a little bit of extra utility. So like if you find yourself mid to late pack, you need a two drop. This is a great one to pick up. Uh, other than that, not super exciting. Uh, Frostweb Spider uh, is a snow creature, 1-3 for 2 and a green. Uh, it can block as though it had flying, as most spiders can. And when it blocks a creature with flying, put a 1-1 one -one counter on it at the end of combat. Uh, this is one of those cards that sounds great in theory, because it would be amazing to just be able to pile counters on it. But the likelihood of that like truly happening is very, very low. Uh, the reason being, like, they're obviously going to see it on the field. Like, they're going to attack around it. So, like, they're not going to swing in with their 2-2 two -two griffin uh, into your 1-3 spider just so you can get a counter on it. So I don't love it for that reason. What I would love is if it had, like, flash. Uh, just so you can get an easy counter on it. That would be pretty cool. But uh, it doesn't seem amazing. I think it's a fine creature. I think I'd play it in a green deck, but it's not first pick for sure. <clears throat> Ooh, Scred. Ah, I love Scred. So it's an instant for one red. Deals damage to target creature equal to the number of snow permanents that you control. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, a lot of good things about this card. One, it's not a snow permanent itself. Uh, so you don't need a snow land to actually do anything uh, or to actually play it. However, it does count the number of snow permanents and just deals that damage to a creature at instant speed for one red mana. Uh, that's pretty efficient, uh, even if it is only like a two or two toughness creature or three toughness creature. If you can tag it for one mana at instant speed, like I'm super in. Uh, and I love the fact that there's no real mana investment. Uh, it's just it is just that one mana. I kind of want to take this over shackles. That might be incorrect, but I'm going to do it. Screw it. I think that it's a better card. I might be wrong, of course, so please let me know in the comments section. Uh, Martyr of Bones is a 1-1 for 1 black. Uh, pay 1, reveal X black cards from your hand. Sacrifice Martyr of Bones, remove up to X target cards in a single graveyard from the game. 
don't love this card in limited. Uh, I do think that, you know, there's some cool utility you could do in constructed, probably in standard. This wasn't a terrible, like, sideboard guard. Uh, but it just doesn't do enough uh, in limited. It's great to be able to remove cards from the graveyard, but in in uh, draft, you tend not to really care about the cards in the graveyard very much. Uh, and so it's it's just not got enough utility, unfortunately. It's not a terrible thing to sideboard if you really need to, but that's it. Uh, Rune Snag is an instant for one and a blue. Uh, counter target spell, unless its controller pays two, plus an additional two for each card named Rune Snag in your graveyard. Uh, obviously great for control decks. Like, it's a two-mana counter. Uh, so turns, like, two through four, it's probably very good. Uh, after that, it gets much less good, but anytime they're playing something on curve, uh, it's probably going to be on points. So, like, that's really, really nice that it scales like that. And not to mention, if you do take them early, you have a better chance of getting a lot more of them, which obviously just makes them better. So there's a lot of upside here. I don't know if it's better than Scred. Uh, if I'm honest, I kind of want to say no, uh, just because Scred is... Yeah, I think that it's a pretty good card, I will say, in Limited. I don't know for sure. Uh, but I, I think I would still take Scred here over Runesnack. Uh, our first uncommon is Rhymewind Cryomancer. Uh, it is a 2-3 for 3 and a blue. Pay 1, tap it, counter target, activated ability. Play this only if you control 4 or more snow permanents. Um, <clears throat> interesting card. Uh, I don't know how many like crazy abilities there are, uh, especially in Limited where you're kind of subject to what uh, whatever you open. Um, I might be wrong in saying that this isn't like a super powerful card, but I don't think I would take it here. Uh, I think I'd rather have like just a solid removal spell. So I'm, I would take Scred here, but again, that's this is where my lack of knowledge and like not having drafted this set comes into play. Uh, so again, please, please feel free to let me know in the comment section. <clears throat> uh, Tressor Horn Sky Knight uh, is a 5-3 for 5 and 2 black. Pretty expensive. Uh, it does have flying though and prevent all damage that would be dealt to it by creatures with first strike. I mean, that's a bomb. It's not an amazing bomb, but it is bomb. That's pretty cool. Uh, preventing all damage with against first strike, I have no clue how relevant that is because I don't know how many first strikers there are in this set. Could be a lot, could not be hardly any, but it is a nice little, you know, kind of passive ability. The fact that it has flying is what makes this good, though. Uh, hopefully this would be just a really solid bomb. I think I would take it over Scred, uh, if I'm honest, just because it is a flyer that has five power, and that's on point. Uh, does probably die pretty easily, though, so keep that in mind. Uh, it's just a fun card, though. I think I would take it here. Uh, Balduvian Rage uh, is an instant for X and a red. Target attacking creature gets plus X plus zero until the end of the turn. Draw a card at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. Uh, this is just a super solid, like, really solid, actually, uh, combat trick. The fact that it replaces itself, very, very good. The fact that it scales even better, uh, it just means you're probably going to remove something no matter what, or you could technically win with, like, an unblocked creature, which is pretty sweet. Uh, I don't know if this is better than the Sky Knight. I could actually see a world where that's, that's the case. I don't know. I'm going to keep them together. We'll see what our last card is. Ugh, Allosaurus Rider. Uh, such a cool card. Five and two green for a one plus star, one plus star creature. Uh, you can remove two green cards in your hand from the game rather than play, uh, play it for the mana cost. Uh, its power and toughness are equal to one plus the number of lands you control. Uh, so this is just going to be like super strong sometimes, uh, is kind of the, the takeaway here. Uh, it's not a snow permanent, so you can play it off of just any lands too, which is pretty great. Is it the best card? I don't know. It's just like pure power and toughness, which is pretty tough to deal with sometimes. So like, I kind of have to assume that this is pretty good. Balduvian Rage, though, seems awesome, too. Uh, I do think it's between these two. Uh, Tressor and Sky Knight, good, but I think this might just be a better card for that. Um, I want to hedge and say you guys pick. I'm going to say Rider just because it's a solid bomb. Uh, please, though, of course, let me know what you guys think. I, again, if any of you drafted during this time, what I would love is for you guys to just be like, hey, you're completely off base, or 
yeah, you guys nailed it. So let me know in the comment section, but I'm going to go Ryder. Both of these cards seem great, so uh, feel free to, uh, to let me know what you think. So if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack video.